Hi guys, I'm here with another battle video, which is a recorded battle video from Battlespot. I really wanted to do a Battlespot video today, but there's been a new update for Sun and Moon, and if I don't record the videos that are in the battle recorder, I don't think I'll be able to replay them anymore, so I decided, hey, I'll just um, record some of the battle videos that I have and try and do some on-the-spot commentary to try and, like, a little bit of practice, a little bit of an entertaining battle to post as well. So, um... This is a battle I had against Blue Yoshi 99 and it was it was a pretty interesting battle. It was fairly long for a VGC battle too, so I thought it might be an interesting place to start. It is also a battle using my new team. Well, I say new team, but I've been using it for about three months now, I'd say. I started using it in February, the, the end of February, and it's now May, so yeah. Also, can I just note, this guy, this trainer, this th my opponent, Blue Yoshi, I, I see what he's doing there with the blue. Excellent, excellent colour coordination there. Also Beast Balls, which match his outfit too. Very important, the key to successful VGC team and performance is to have good matching outfits. Okay, so <laughs> I should start talking about the actual battle itself. Arcanine and Celesteela against Tapalole and Driplin. Now, generally you'd want to try and get the Arcanine out so it won't be a bother later on in the game. Celesteela can be neutered with a Will-O-Wisp, assuming that it is the um, Heavy Slam physical variant because Celesteelas also carry Flamethrower for um, other Celesteela and also for the... I guess not specifically for Buzzwall, but it's very problematic for Buzzwall if it gets flamethrowered by a Celesteela. But luckily he just goes for the Leech Seed. I expect he's predicting me to switch my Lele out, but I can kind of justify the fact that I didn't by saying, hey, I will wisp to keep the Celesteela in check. But at the same time, Heavy Slam with a burn on a little tiny Lele would still do quite a lot of damage. So now there's two physical attackers on the field. Well. Potentially a mixed attacker. We don't know if the Celesteela is special or physical at this point, but still Arcanine's a fairly safe switch in and There's a Snorlax on the field, so I can also neuter that in case it gets a belly drum up But the only problem is that is in Snorlax can carry facade. Sorry about that. I don't know why I just did there, but yeah um, But this Snorlax doesn't it has frustration which bypasses the requirement of happiness so instead of making your Pokemon happy and healthy you make them absolutely miserable and you do that by feeding them roots and just being not a very nice trainer but that's fine it's a an easy mechanic to be able to use because if you trade your Pokemon their happiness goes down to z I'm not sure if it's zero or how that works but yeah there has been cases where people will have trained their return Pokemon like a Kangaskhan and then traded it and then zero happiness, weak returns. I believe that happened to one of the um, senior world champions at one of the nationals before. But anyway, um, switching to Arcanine here neuters my own Arcanine, but I just go for the, um, the Shadow Ball onto the Arcanine. I think I was actually predicting a switch from that Celesteela slot. So I can't remember where I target this Gigavolt Havoc into, but Common switches for Celesteelas tend to be Arcanines to get both the Intimidate on whatever Pokemon is threatening the Celesteela and to do some decent damage to it too. So yeah, I do go for the Giga Vault Havoc kind of predicting the Arcanine switch in, but I am at minus one, so that puts him into kind of low range HP, so I can finish it off with maybe a Shadow Ball next turn. Anyway, um, Snorlax does go for the Curse, which increases its defense by one stage, which is the important part because it is burned. And the Leech Seed on my Drift Bloom heals the Arcanine up a little bit. So this is a good thing about Celesteela. It can put out Leech Seeds in one slot and then you can just switch. And as long as your opponent doesn't switch, like a Pokemon like Drift Bloom is going to be staying around on the field a lot. So that's going to give a lot of HP recovery for whatever Pokemon happens to be in that slot until Drift Bloom goes down. So anyway, um, make the switch into Lele so I still have my Arcanine to both Intimidate and to hit that Celesteel in the back and the Snorlax does go for the recycle which will let it get back its Figgy Berry and Arcanine continuously restores a decent amount of HP. The way Leech Seed works is it restores HP based on, I think it's one, is it one eighth of your um, HP? I'll double check that, but 
the higher the the Pokemon that's leech seed is HP is, the more HP you'll recover because it's one eighth of their HP, not one eighth of your HP that you get back. So leech seeding a Pokemon like Snorlax gives huge HP recovery. Anyway, um, Shadow Ball into the Arcanine slot, which switches into Celesteela, so that takes it really well. And Psychic into the Snorlax just finishes it off before any more, any more berry shenanigans happen because uh, boosted Snorlax can be a really, really problematic Pokemon to deal with. And as you can see, the Celesteel just keeps on restoring that HP from the Leech Seed, which is sticking around. Like I said, Drifling's one of those Pokemon that kind of stay around, can be a bit of a dead slot at times. It does have a lot of um, versatility, it can Shadow Ball, it can will o -Wisp, it can Tailwind, which I haven't done this match yet. Usually when your opponent's Pokemon are slow, you don't tend to go straight for the Tailwind, but if you see a fast Pokemon, like Tapu Koko here, it's time to get out that Tailwind because you do not want to lose your Tapu Lily to a powerful Thunderbolt in terrain when you could just outspeed it the next turn. Anyway, kind of leaving my Drifloom here out in the open to go down this turn, but that's kind of ideal when um, Drifloom thinks after it's set up Tailwind it allows a new Pokemon to come in that can take advantage of the Tailwind being up. You just have to be careful to predict the um, protects properly and the switches properly to take advantage of your tailwind turns or your opponent will just take advantage of your own tailwind by switching correctly, wearing the um, tailwind down and still preserving that fast pokemon that can deal big damage to your own pokemon. So here I, I send in my Arcanine and I know he still has his Arcanine in the back, quite healthy thanks to the leech seed recovery too. So I have to always be wary that that um, switch into Arcanine is there. I'm pretty sure I Moonblast instead of Psychic. I really should Psychic. Though I guess I could have also doubled into the Cell Stealer this turn. I can't remember which I go for. Like I said, it's um, been a while. So, I, okay, I do go for the Psychic, which I guess is not really the best play there. If I was going to go into the Cell Stealer to wear it down a bit, I really should have gone for the Moonblast, because Moonblast has five extra... P, um, I was going to say PvP, but 5 extra base power, so it allows the Celesteela to get another Leech Seed up, and it's going to be recovering a lot of HP. It's down to really low HP right now, but after the Leftovers recovery, the Leech Seed from Tabu Lily, and I can't remember if the Arcanine's been Leech Seeded yet, but that's going to be a lot of recovery for Celesteela, bringing it back into the yellow, just barely, and um, burn damage just a little bit. So I guess I did... Um, avoid my Arcanine being leech -eated. But luckily Tapu Lily is faster than the Arcanine and Psychic is enough to take it out. Usually you've got to try and predict switch-ins and even though Moonblast would do more damage if I went into the Coco slot last turn, Psychic would have been doing less damage because of the terrain's not up. But a switch into Arcanine would mean Moonblast is not very effective so you kind of have to decide which move would be better in which situation. Anyway, he sends out his Tapu Koko, which is his last Pokemon. He does go for the Protect to try and um, get that Tailwind down, which will actually work to his advantage because he does run the Discharge and he does have the Terrain advantage here and is recovering the HP from Leech, uh, Leech Seed. So, um, this puts me in an interesting position because both my Pokemon Will most likely be going down to a discharge this turn so I just go for the extreme speed just to get some damage on and he does go for the discharge which um, should take both my Pokemon out at this point so I'll just have to see who the last Pokemon is and if they can um, defeat this terrain Tapu Koko and luckily the electricity disappears from the field this turn and I do have Nihili going back which means I'm pretty safe but I can still be done in by Discharge. Discharge has that 30% chance of causing paralysis. And if I'm constantly getting fully paralyzed, even a big, especially bulky Pokemon like Nihiligo could fail and faint to this type of Coco. But luckily I do not get that and I managed to take out the the Tapu Coco. Also apologies for um, mispronouncing Nihiligo, Nihiligo. It's, it comes from a specific word that I have trouble pronouncing in the first place. But yeah, this was a fairly fun match. It was actually, um, I think I can switch um, 
to this one. It was 12 turns long, and that's pretty long for a BGC battle. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that battle. It was quite fun. But yeah, thanks for watching this um, little battle. I'm actually not sure how long this is in terms of minutes, so if it was long or short or whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna leave before it gets even longer. Thanks for watching. Bye! <laughs>